The amazing world of gumball is, well, amazing. Okay, we got that joke out of the way, good. Being a part of the Cartoon Network renaissance of the 2010s, Gumball, alongside regular show and Adventure Time, were big factors in bringing cartoons as a whole back into relevance after a little quality dip in the 2000s. And this show has easily cemented itself as one of the funniest cartoons of all time. And today, we're going to be covering the series from start to end. So strap in, we've got six seasons worth of insanity to look at. But first, some context. This is Gumball Watterson, a young blue cat who resides in the town of Elmore and goes to school at Elmore Junior High. He's got a loving family made up of Nicole, his uber-crazy but uber-caring mom, who's also a cat, Richard, a big pink bunny who's got a knack for being lazy, and Ais, his hyper-intelligent four-year-old sister who's a bunny as well, and, of course, the family's pet goldfish, who's more like a brother at this point, Darwin, who since sprouting legs has become Gumball's best friend. There's a whole lot of other characters you'll meet in Town of Elmore as well, all of whom are equally odd as the family themselves. But without any further ado, let's get into the recap. In the very first episode, The Responsible, Gumball and Darwin are reluctantly made babysitters for Anais as Nicole and Richard head off to a parent-teacher conference. Are you aware that your husband isn't wearing any pants? Gumball and Darwin go overboard when it comes to safety precautions and start wrecking the house with their weird ideas. And <laughs> Ais seems to be the most responsible one in the house, actually. The two chase Anais away from her running bath, but she outsmarts them and locks them out. The bath floods the house, though, and so the two head in through the sewer to save her. The parents get home right after the kids escape the house through the chimney, and well, Nicole isn't happy. Mom? It was Darwin. What? Ironically, nobody takes any responsibility for what happened, though, and just blame the internet. Well, I mean, that works, I guess. In the next episode, the DVD, Gumball and Darwin accidentally destroy a rental DVD in the most stupid way possible. The slightest scratch, and they're ruined. Forever. Uh, Gumball? Up, up, up. And try and find a way out of their problem. They've got to get 25 bucks before their mom finds out about the DVD. Because if she does, it won't be pretty. Oh, and it turns out she's on her way home. So they gotta think fast. Raising money didn't work, so they resorted to a plan they have very little doubt will fail. But that's all they got. Nicole gets home, realizes the DVD was never returned, and chases the boys all the way to the video store. And I do mean chase. The boys reach the store, and we finally see their genius plan. A home movie remake of Alligators on a Train complete with cardboard alligators. Larry doesn't buy it. Oh, also the clerk is Larry. You'll see him a lot. Nicole arrives and decides to pay the $25 herself, but there's also the lateness fee that adds up to $700. And well, again, nobody takes responsibility. I'm sensing a theme. In the next episode, while playing their homemade board game Dodge or Dare, the boys realize they need a third friend and head to school to find one. They consider Tina, the T-Rex, William, the creepy winged eyeball thing, and Banana Joe, who's just a little too odd for them. Bobbert seems a bit rough, and Leslie the Flower is straight up creepy. All of these characters remain throughout the show as side characters, by the way. You'll see them later. Anyway, it seems like the guys are stuck being a duo, until another school kid, Tobias, shows up, and he's in. As long as Gumball and Darwin pay him. That said, he mainly hangs out with Darwin, so Gumball starts feeling left out. I feel like I've known him forever. Gumball! Especially when everyone pairs up in gym class. Darwin pairs with Tobias, and Gumball is stuck with Alan, a talking balloon. Yeah, sure, we can have a sleepover. 20 bucks. 10 bucks. I'm not coming. Eventually, Alan helps Gumball realize that he needs Darwin and so he rushes over to find him at Tobias' house, only to find Darwin already feels bad for leaving Gumball. The two become best friends again, and they ditch Tobias for being a bit of a jerk. The next episode, The Debt, shows us the neighbors of the Watersons, that being the Robinsons, who are a couple of grumpy puppets. After Mr. Robinson saves his life, Gumball vows to repay him. I'll get the cough drops, my ship! What are you doing here? 
I'm here to save your life. Even though the guy doesn't want anything to do with him, Gumball is heartbroken when he figures this out though. And so, to cheer him up, Darwin and Anais decide to make a fake threat against Mr. Robinson so Gumball can actually save the guy. Mr. Robinson will be a... 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 Robinson heads off to perform in a talent show. Anais and Darwin try to catch Gumball's attention with purposely off-target sandbags. But eventually, he saves Mr. Robinson. But he still isn't happy. Gumball is proud of himself, though. And Mr. Robinson is promptly smushed. Happy ending, I guess. The episode The Pressure introduces us to Masami, a girl who's just a talking cloud. She's invited along with a bunch of the other Elmore girls up to a treehouse to talk about boys. She lies and says Darwin is her boyfriend to impress the others, while Gumball and Darwin alongside Banana Joe and Tobias form a pact, pals before gals. Masami tries to prove it, but Darwin is just made uncomfortable and launches himself out of a window before the guys can chastise him. Gumball's crush, Penny, who's a peanut with antlers, walks up to him after, which also causes him to jump out the window, figures. other hand, I splash Penny and look like a what was that? Masami brings Darwin up to the treehouse to kiss him in front of the other girls, while Gumball went up with Penny to try and save Darwin, and maybe to also kiss Penny. The other guys cut the treehouse down right as each guy is about to kiss the girls, and it causes the two guys to kiss each other, unbeknownst to them. Well, at least they seem happy about it. Hi, Gumball. In the episode, The Laziest, we find out that Richard may just be the laziest guy in all of Elmore, with him challenging to try and find someone even lazier than him. They don't quite match up themselves, so they look for Lazy Larry, who turns out to be the same Larry from the DVD rental place. Turns out he also works at the supermarket. Larry explains he isn't lazy anymore because he's got a job, a car, and a girlfriend, and so the boys proceed to inadvertently destroy each of those. Get out of my life! <laughs> and then, when he finally does become lazy again, he's so lazy he doesn't even show up to challenge Richard. The boys decide to give it a shot themselves one more time, and Gumball actually wins with Richard giving up, just as Nicole gets home with Richard conveniently in pain after doing so many chores. Fluffy soldier, I don't want you to move another muscle. Nicole forces the boys to do the rest of the chores, and so the real winner here turns out to be Richard himself. He's smart in a dumb way. The next episode gives us a proper introduction to Carrie, one of the girls from the Treehouse episode. She's a ghost, and is using Gumball to try and taste food again. Cause, you know, she's a ghost, she can't eat. The only problem is Gumball didn't consent to her using him at all, and he always ends up with this massive gut and stomach ache afterwards. <laughs> Muffin <laughs> Even after Gumball outright says no, Carrie takes his body, and it's only when she realizes she's eating literal garbage does she stop. The boys decide to let her use Richard instead, who loves food already, and peace is kinda restored. Hey, sussy, how's your hot chocolate? In a later episode, we're introduced to the grumpy granny Jojo, who's Richard's mom and the kid's grandma. She's a kisser and accidentally kisses Gumball on the mouth. Gumball, just get it over with. Well, it's easy for you to... <laughs> Which instantly scars him. Darwin decides to try and help clear Gumball's mind and takes him out to find a happy place, but his mind still fixates on that awful kiss. Darwin sets up a marathon of awfulness to try and push the Granny Jojo memory out, culminating with walking through the toe of one of the school's giant students, Hector. It works, and so he's able to present his cheek for a kiss goodbye from Granny Jojo, to which he's kissed on the lips again. Poor guy. Hey, I hear your grandma's in town. Give her a big kiss from me. <laughs> in the episode The Party, Tobias' older sister Rachel is throwing a party and says the younger grade can only show up if they have a date, leading to mass hysteria, of course. You'll learn that that is Elmore's natural state as the show goes on. Gumball gets a note at lunch, which he misunderstands, and then tries to get a date, but, you know, I hate to say it, he's not great with girls. After begging on the phone, Gumball gets a date, who turns out to be Tina, and Penny brings Hector, and is evidently super pissed at Gumball. The school staff, Miss Simeon and Principal Brown, also crash the party and take it to the next level. Okay, and also, hear me out. You see that Cyclops guy there? The one who has no speaking parts at all and is basically just a background character? Yeah, remember him. I mean it. You'll need to. Anywho, the party escalates, and Darwin finds Rachel crying outside. He tells her his full name when she asks, which is just so confusingly long. Darwin Raglan Caspian Ahab Poseidon Nick 
Nicodemus Watterson III. And then promises he'll clean the house after the party. Meanwhile, Penny tells Gumball the note from earlier was from her, and Gumball rightfully feels like an idiot. Darwin cleans, and Rachel kisses him, causing him to flop on his back. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's a fish, so that kind of, that makes sense. Penny and Gumball almost kiss too, but Richard shows up and blares the car horn at the last minute, inadvertently ruining the moment. I like the new one better. Who? What? Penny? Oh no, I, I don't love her. I oh, and if that's not enough kissing for you, Miss Simeon and Principal Brown kiss in Tobias's closet. Creep. In the episode The Date, Penny asks Gumball to come to her house for an afternoon, and so Gumball gets ready for his big date. Richard, Anais, and Darwin help him prepare, but when he shows up, it turns out Penny invited him to a funeral for her family's pet tarantula. The spider! Knock his block off! That's awful! So Gumball didn't really listen all the way. That checks out. When using the bathroom, Gumball finds the tarantula who's still alive and a little aggressive, it seems. He reunites Penny's family with Mr. Cuddles and then passes out from all the bites he's gotten from him. What an unfitting name for a pet. Right, Mr. Cuddles? <laughs> all right, this next episode played so often back in the day. The microwave. Gumball makes a jar full of the grossest things in the world, and Richard unknowingly microwaves it, giving birth to Kenneth, who's a tad bloodthirsty. Darwin! Uh, where do you think you're going? Uh, buy some stuff. He grows and ends up eating a ton of Elmore residents. The microwave became alive and swallowed the mailman and dad and the Anais and wanted to eat us and we gotta hear it. What? <laughs> Including Richard, Nicole, and Anais. After Darwin gets stuck after hopping in to rescue them, Gumball turns the hose on and pops Kenneth bringing him back to baby form. The boys decide to give him one more chance, and then he goes full kaiju. Yeah, maybe they should have gone with their gut there. Time for season two, starting off with The Knights. In this one, after driving Penny over to Gumball's house for a project, Penny's dad decides that he doesn't want his daughter to be around the water since. He got the oh! Oh, wow, these things just pop right off, don't they? Tobias, who also likes Penny, wants to try and be her partner, and so he sets up a joust, which Gumball and Penny both find super immature. In the process, Penny is pushed into the street and is almost run over by her dad. But Gumball saves her, and he realizes that he isn't as bad as he seems. In the episode The Job, Richard finally gets off his lazy butt and becomes a pizza man mainly so he can get a bite of free food by sneaking a nibble of the pizzas he delivers. He drops his delivery bag as he heads off, and the boys run to return it to him. Here's a 20. However, Nicole and the boys start to realize that the fabric of the universe is unraveling, likely due to Richard getting this job. They grab Larry, who's the manager of the pizza place, of course, and he says the only way he can fire Richard is if he screws up. They try to stop his order, but he arrives at the house uninterrupted. Just before he delivers the pizza, though, the customer realizes it's been eaten a bit, and so Larry fires him, saving the entire universe. Wow, all that power in the hands of a dumb bunny. But don't worry, I'll get another one. In the episode Halloween, Gumball, Darwin, and Anais all head over to the haunted mansion for a Halloween party that's full of ghosts. Carrie helps them get in by giving them a potion they can only have one drop of, and voila, now they can actually see all the ghosts. Oh, also, the reason they can always see Carrie is because she was born a ghost. When Gumball and Darwin are outed as mortals, don't! They drink the full potion to become full ghosts, which means Darwin can do something he's wanted to do for a while, which apparently is kiss Carrie. Huh? They get back to their bodies before midnight and become mortal again, and also save Anais, who had gotten herself into trouble, and everything is perfectly normal. Yep, it's normal. Not a thing out of place. It was supposed to be fun! I didn't know what the potion was gonna do when I drank it! What? Have you ever wondered just why Richard is so dumb? Well, in the episode The Authority, we find out exactly why. Granny Jojo visits after Richard is hospitalized. Hmm. And she decides to start trying to impose a bunch of new safety rules on the household. Some of her tactics to teach safety lessons are downright insane as well. <laughs> The kids are so babied that they become as dumb as Richard, as the only thing they know is safe is watching TV and eating. Nicole realizes this and tries to help them back to normal by making sure they learn from their mistakes rather than never having any at all. 
Richard takes the kids out in the car, but forgets how to break, and only at the last second does Richard actually use his brain and remember where it is. The day is saved, and Nicole melts from fear. Because who wouldn't after almost getting hit by a car driven by a bunch of idiots who happen to be your family? The episode The Pony is weirdly important. You'll see why soon. So Anais has Gumball and Darwin rent a movie for her, and they're on a mission to get home to her ASAP to watch it with her because she seems upset. They run into someone who seemingly knows them, but they have no clue who he is. Rich? Did you just call me Rich like it was a question? Turns out his name is Rob, and he's been around before. That's the guy from the episode The Party that I told you to remember. But Gumball and Darwin didn't get the memo and forget about him once more after kicking him into the sewer. That is so mean. Long story short, they return home, but Anais doesn't even like the movie. So, yeah. In the episode The Storm, we see that Alan, the balloon, and Carmen, the cactus, are in love. And annoying everyone with how sappy they're being, that relationship just doesn't seem safe, man. Anyway, the criticism they get makes Carmen realize their love is becoming stale, and so she gets Gumball to help spice things up. She has him kiss her. <laughs> But Carmen just floats away in sadness instead of trying to stop things. So all that plan did was impale Gumball's face with a bunch of prickles. Masami, the cloud girl, gets Gumball to try and set her up with Alan to make Carmen jealous. And Gumball has to do his best to help Alan get back to his usual self by any means necessary. Thanks, Gumball. Whatever, man. Carmen finds out. But again, instead of trying to stop it, she just gets sad. And it's revealed it was all a scheme by Masami to get Alan to date her. Penny finds out about Gumball kissing Carmen and things get really messy really quick. Alan saves the day through more sappiness and the two get back together. Gumball and Penny, though technically not dating, also agree to never get like that. In the episode The Sweaters, we're introduced to the most annoying character ever put on a television screen, Sarah. She just transferred schools, and apparently at her last one, Gumball and Darwin are famous for being rebels and ultra hardcore. They quickly admit that they're in no way any of those things. However, after school, they meet some of Sarah's old schoolmates who pick on them. But Gumball and Darwin just don't care at all. Sarah's the only one who's stirring the pot on their side, and she ends up only trying to add fuel to the fire more and more as the episode goes on for literally no reason. Anyway, the preppy kids' dad, Coach, comes over and harasses the boys. But even still, they really don't care. The worst thing is that this guy's got two sweaters and he's not wearing either of them. Also, he looks kind of like Omni-Man from Invincible. They're challenged to a tennis game. <laughs> What? See you on the court, losers. And lose miserably. But hey, at least they showed courage by showing up. Yeah, this one's kind of going for an 80s sports movie vibe, and they are clearly as done with these tropes as the rest of humanity. This one's funny, but I hate the ice cream cone. In the episode The Finale, the Watersons are going through a memory book and reflect on all their past adventures. You can even see when the house flooded in the very first episode, and then see how it went back to normal right after. Well, today, the Watersons' actions are catching up to them. They've got bills to pay, school to redo, and jail time to potentially face. Wow. Eventually, they decide to just cancel out all the problems they're facing by making even more problems. This is for breaking us out of here, and this is for punching my husband. They bring back Kenneth and have him fight Hector the Giant from Gumball School and eventually have the whole town on them for everything they've ever done. The only thing that could save them is some magic device that resets reality itself, that being the classic TV show status quo. And so, the episode ends. Yeah, this one gets really meta at the end. Here's one of our first big lore episodes, titled The Void. Gumball and Darwin, along with Mr. Small, the school counselor, realize that certain things and people are going missing, and so they set out to figure things out. They find out that an old friend of theirs, Molly, is missing. She's the dinosaur girl who had the treehouse back in the season one episode, The Pressure. As boring as Molly. <gasps> Of course! They go to her house, but it's nowhere to be found, and they soon realize the world folded in on itself. They go into the fold and find all the mistakes the world has ever made. And if you look closely, you can even see Rob. Still unimportant as always, I see. Classic Rob. They find Molly and try to get out of the void before it closes. Mr. Small gets them out via his van. Janus, which obviously is a mistake that belongs there, but I digress. Run him over. And all is well by the end. Until the gang gets their tinfoil hat sucked off and their memories are wiped of the experience before they can tell the rest of the world. Jeez. Here's a big change for the series. The episode, The Shell. Gumball and Penny are the leads in a play. And during an improvised kissing scene, Gumball just straight up accidentally headbutts Penny, cracking her shell in the process. Oh my god. 
The two get ready to tell Penny's dad about it, alongside Darwin, who's there to help. But things don't go well. Mr. Fitzgerald, Penny's dad, wants to fix her, but she questions whether she wants to be fixed at all. She's grounded, and Gumball is kicked out. Kinda an ugly situation going on. Penny sneaks off to Gumball's overnight to tell him her dad is making her move schools, but Gumball convinces her to revolt and break out of her shell, which she literally does. You look... You look... What? Do I look bad? No! You look... Taking a bunch of different forms that correlate with how she's feeling, Gumball tells Penny's dad what's wrong with his thinking but says to not beat himself up too much because parenting is hard, and essentially eases tensions with like three sentences. Turn my daughter into a monster! Chuck! Of... pretty move? That's pretty impressive stuff. Gumball finds Penny in a forest and kisses her to try and ease her mind, and it works. And yeah, Penny stays out of her shell from here on out. This is a good one. It also used to air all the time back in the day, for good reason. In the episode, The Bros, Darwin gets jealous of how much Gumball thinks of Penny over him, and so he tries to get some dirt on her. He then just screws with Penny out of jealousy, and when Gumball tries to propose to Penny, yeah, I know we got so much in common. <laughs> Be my wife. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. She says she wants to give him space so he can sort out his relationship with Darwin. To make it up to Gumball, Darwin decides to help set up a perfect proposal scenario, but it doesn't go according to plan at all. Oh. Huh? Gumball finally asks Penny to marry him, but she says she can't because they're too young. But she has an idea for what to do with the ring. She pronounces Darwin and Gumball to be bros. See, that is a real bromance right there. In the episode, The Man, Granny Jojo introduces the rest of her family to her new boyfriend, Louie, and Richard isn't having it. She's got a date with him later that night, but Richard is worried what his dad will say when he gets back from the grocery store. We help Granny Jojo make herself pretty for Louie. What do you think? Huh, what do you know? Apparently, he left to get milk 42 years ago and hasn't come back since. Granny Jojo eventually comes clean to him, though, and explains that Richard's dad is never coming back which he then comes to terms with and admits he was jealous of Louis taking his mother's attention away from him. He then hugs Louis and the whole ordeal is smoothed over. And yep, Louis is here to stay, just in case you were wondering. It's a shame about Richard's dad, though. In The Oracle, Gumball finds a bunch of paintings at a yard sale that prophesized moments in life before they happen. Who painted this? My mom. And the only thing that hasn't happened was labeled for today. Spooky. So yeah, he's got to worry about getting stripped at the mall somehow, despite his plan to stay home all day to prevent his fate. Gumball is forced to go to the mall by his mom, and things start to shape up more and more like the painting. Gumball decides if it's gonna happen, it'll go down on his terms. And so he takes off all of his clothes and accepts his destiny. To end things off, we get a look at the next painting, which predicts some real ominous stuff in the future of the Watterson family. That can't be good. Yeah, Richard, stop that now, please. For our last important episode of Season 3, we've got The Nobody. Can you guess who this one is from the title alone? The episode starts with Darwin and Gumball being accused of stealing the rest of the family's personal belongings and being grounded because of it. They both know neither of them did anything and realize someone has got to be in the house with them. What secrets may be hiding? <laughs> oh! The two eventually find a secret room in their living room and figure out that Rob has been living there for months. After a super intense chase scene, Let's run the scary! they reach him and he explains he's nothing. They try and make him something by coming up with personalities he could have and land on a villain personality. And so, Rob fittingly remembers his evil origin story. He was left behind in the void back when Gumball and Darwin went to save Molly and was only able to escape by clinging to the back of Mr. Small's van, which deformed him in the process. Now he'll try and get revenge and be the Watterson's mortal enemy, which Gumball and Darwin just don't care about. Some things never change, I guess. To kick off season four, we've got the episode, The Nemesis. And Rob is starting to try and fit into his evil villain role. But not having any luck, Gumball and Darwin decide to help him out and give him the evil name Dr. Wrecker to start him out. And they help him with an evil voice and costume. Again? I will destroy you and everyone you love! After he ruins a party Gumball and Darwin set up for him, Rob heads off and again vows he'll destroy the two, only to immediately come back asking for help. Apparently, he broke the controls to the Elmore Dam while trying to flood the town, and now wants to make sure they save the day. Right. Go. 
I'm sorry, guys. I really don't feel like touching live electrical wires with my bare hand. However, it turns out Rob only wrecked a vending machine. And Elmore doesn't even have a dam in the first place. So, yeah. Rob is down on himself again and the boys decide to fall into a trap of his to cheer him up. They are too nice to someone who literally vowed to destroy them. What are they thinking? In the episode The Signature, Louis tells Richard that he plans on marrying his mom, Granny Jojo, and Richard's instincts kick in. Richard tricks Louis into signing adoption papers, making him his son, and uses his new parental power to forbid him from doing so. Then Louis tricks Nicole into signing adoption papers and makes her his daughter and forbids Richard from seeing her. Yeah, this one got weird. The kids figure that the only way to solve this is going to the highest member on the family tree, Frankie Watterson, Richard's dad. We finally get to see him and well, he's a sleazy green rat who's down on his luck and decides to finally return home after seeing an ad in the paper. After an emotional reunion, Frankie tricks Richard into signing the deed to the house over instead of adoption papers to fix the whole mess. And so everyone races to the courthouse. It's the line on the left, get this stamped. Frankie cuts them off, but upon seeing the same sad face Richard had as when he left for milk, he comes to his senses and lets things go back to normal, with Richard even having Frankie adopt him. This show is crazy. In the episode The Origins, we get to see the early life of the Watersons, starting with the day Baby Gumball got a pet goldfish named Darwin. However, the goldfish dies. Bingo! And so Richard has to go buy another, and another, and another, and another? Yeah, they can't seem to take care of them all, jeez. Oh, also we can see a baby Banana Joe in the background here, and it's kinda adorable. Eventually, Richard buys a special goldfish from a mysterious vendor, and Gumball immediately hits it off with him. After a little death scare, the Watersons take a family picture, and Darwin talks, scaring Richard and having him tossed into the toilet. Oh, that's just awesome. No worries though, as Darwin makes it to the ocean from the sewer and wills himself onto land. In not so graceful fashion, cause you know, he doesn't have legs or lungs. Through his love for Gumball, he manages to gain lungs and starts his grueling voyage home. Have you seen this boy's fish? Again, through Gumball's connection, Darwin gains legs and makes it back to Elmore, right before Gumball gets a new goldfish. Baby Gumball gives him his green boots to cover his feet. And thus, we now know the full story of Darwin. This one's super sweet, I'd say give it a full watch if you're interested. In the episode The Bus, the school bus driver, Rocky, decides to just not take the kids to school today, and a bunch of poorly disguised adults, including the principal, Mr. Brown, all hop on board alongside a ticking briefcase. Also, the balloon is a blatant Breaking Bad reference. No joke, he's got the name and everything. My name is Mr. Brown, this is Mr. Pink, Mr. Rainbow, and Mr. White. The kids figure their parents are just trying to teach them a lesson, so Gumball goes up to his dad and tries to blow his cover. And yeah, it's obvious as to what they're trying to accomplish as soon as they talk about how their lives turn to crime after ditching class. The plan is already horrible, but the cops eventually get involved, and the adults take a bag of money offered for the safe return of the kids. Help! What? <laughs> This has gone from failed inspirational moment to full-on kidnapping. Apparently, this was the plan all along, set up by Rob who wanted revenge and money. He and Gumball fight for the money and he escapes, but apparently grabbed the wrong case instead of grabbing the ticking one that was a bomb, and is blasted all the way back to the police where he's arrested. You know, I gotta hand it to him, that plan was way more hardcore and thought out than the whole damn explosion one. Next up, we have The Scam which is another Halloween episode. It starts with Gumball telling the story of Gargaroth for show and tell, who's an evil spirit that you should never say the name of. Except Gumball is saying it basically every sentence while explaining him. Not a nice guy, Gargaroth. Can you please stop saying it? <laughs> and so the spirit is summoned and everyone runs out of the classroom. Pretty fitting, Gumball was dressed as Beetlejuice while explaining this. Anyways, it turns out that this was all a ruse to steal some candy with the help of Carrie, and Darwin isn't too pleased with Gumball for the trickery. That is, until Gumball says Carrie will need to possess a body to eat some of it herself. So yeah, Darwin's in. The gang goes around with Gumball and Darwin acting as Ghostbusters. We're here to get rid of Gargroth the Devourer, for a small fee of course and Carrie haunting up different portions of the school and leave the place just as actual Gargaroth shows up. The Watersons are called back to save the place, and Carrie explains that a hero has to sacrifice something to banish him. So, in this case, it's gotta be Gumball and the candy. He sacrifices all but one lollipop, 
but eventually gives in and just throws it to him after Carrie almost has to marry the guy. The episode ends with Carrie and Darwin setting up a date later on, but Gumball's a bit burnt out on ghost stuff after all that and drags him away. In the last episode of season 4, The Disaster, Rob manages to get out of jail and now has his hands on a universal remote for the actual universe. So now he's going to use it to get revenge on Gumball for everything. Oh, also the episode starts with the Watersons singing to the theme of the outro of the actual show, which is pretty weird if I do say so myself. Nothing can go wrong, we'll be happy all day. Anyways, Rob uses the remote to agitate Gumball's family one by one, with Darwin getting his feelings hurt by subtitles. Nicole and Richard getting a full-on divorce thanks to the parental filter being turned off. That's clever. I'm getting a donut and she's getting a better husband. What? And Ais getting lost due to the brightness being turned down, and Penny getting shoved off a balcony thanks to the fast forward. Also, Gumball accidentally kisses Sarah right in front of Penny while the lights were out, meaning Rob is literally ruining everything Gumball cares about. I said I would destroy you and everyone you love. Rob says that once Gumball is gone, he'll be able to be whatever he feels, because it'll no longer be his amazing world, with him even saying none of this is real. Hold on. What does he mean by that? What? He and Gumball fight, but eventually, the remote's batteries die, and so Rob chucks it into the void, causing Gumball to go in after it. Eventually. While falling through the void, the same one Rob was trapped in by the way, he catches the remote, fixes the batteries, and rewinds to give himself a second chance at the day. Wow. This episode was freaking awesome, while managing to still be as funny as the show usually is. Ugh, this is awesome. Start. Break it down! Here we go. Season 5, Episode 1, The Rerun. So after Gumball hit rewind in the last episode, he's reliving the events of the day, but this time with the knowledge of what's going to happen. He rearranges the letters in his subtitles to tell Darwin about Rob, and then launches himself at him to prevent anything from happening to his parents. Rob accidentally hits rewind, though, and de-ages Richard and Nicole until they're babies, which causes the kids to start disappearing because they were never born. And Ais is first to go, and Gumball and Darwin forget about her due to her just technically never existing. And then, right after Darwin shrinks back into the normal goldfish he used to be and full-on just dies. That is brutal. And then, to cap things off, Gumball still ends up pushing Penny off of a balcony. Wow. You have only yourself to- You know what, save it. I've heard it all before. Gumball and Rob go back to fighting, with Gumball winning and pushing Rob back into the void. He feels bad, though, and rushes in to save him with Rob running off due to his general pettiness. Gumball changes the channel at a point too, which he seems pretty perplexed by. He finally catches up to Rob, but is shrinking fast. Rob rewinds to the point where he had Gumball just outside of the void, and admits he can't do it because Gumball was hard to hate, and he realized that especially when he rushed in to try and save him, he rewinds the entire day back, and everyone yet again forgets about the day. Sorry, but you should in the episode, The Outside, the Watersons head off to go visit Richard's dad, Frankie, who lives in a dump. It could be worse. He could live in that. Hello, Watersons! They figure he had to be in prison with the way he lives, and so to try and get him back on his feet, Anais decides to get him on a prison-esque daily routine, starting at their house. Everyone is taking the thing real seriously and playing their role. Too much. Sorry. Except Richard, who's using the time to bond with his dad. Because prison is the best place to do that. Right. Eventually, Frankie gets fed up and tries to leave, but is electrocuted by the doorknob and is knocked out. The Watersons are kinda crazy. Frankie wakes up handcuffed to Gumball, and the two jump out of the window of his room to escape. Sound the alarm! Eventually, the others catch up, and it's revealed that he actually never went to prison and was instead fleeing from three days of jail time. Okay. He's offered to stay with the Watersons as a token of apology, but after what he just endured, he's not interested. And then he's sent to actual prison by a cop who's chasing him for suspiciously running away in striped clothes handcuffed to a child. Poor Frankie, honestly. I mean, he's still kind of a scummy person, but still. In the episode The Matchmaker, after Gumball walks in on Darwin singing some emo love song, he ends up over to the computer and finds a picture of Terry, a paper bear girl from school, and he figures he must be into her. He goes to Carrie, the ghost, for help, and even admits he figured Darwin liked her, but the photographic evidence proves otherwise. Carrie is obviously a little saddened by Gumball's news. Gumball's first idea is not a great one, 
with him figuring that since love is supposed to be like a life or death situation, he's got to put Terry in one. Yeah, that's that's not a good idea. I don't think there's a cure for that. Also, Carrie is planning to sabotage all of Gumball's plans to aid in her own crush goals. This episode gets pretty convoluted. Carrie admits to Gumball what she's been doing and says she feels bad for trying to sabotage Darwin's efforts, and so she makes a love potion and they successfully get the two together. Gumball tells Darwin about what he did for him, and Darwin explains the photo on the computer was actually of Carrie, who just doesn't show up on film. I mean, honestly, what was Gumball thinking? Gumball and Carrie decide to try and break Darwin and Terry up, but no matter what, the potion keeps kicking in. This whole segment is great. The only thing that's finally able to break the potion is Darwin seeing how sad Carrie is when he's kissing Terry. And so to cap the episode off, he finally gets with Carrie. What a happy ending for everyone except Terry. But at least she fell in love with her hand sanitizer, so. In the episode, The Catfish, Gumball and Darwin stumble onto Grandpa Louie's Elmore Plus account, complete with zero friends, and want to try and help him out. I feel nothing for him. Nothing. And so they make an account for a fake person named Muriel to be his friend. He texts Gumball about his story all day, and even tells him that he's getting a bit frustrated with Granny Jojo. Her cutie patootie. I'm sorry, but I refuse to picture that last image. Eventually, Louis just bugs Gumball beyond all belief to the point where he gives up on helping and Darwin decides to set up a meeting between the two so they can come clean. Louie told Muriel that he thinks they could be more than Elmore Plus friends, and then Granny Jojo finds out, and she is pissed. I don't think I would ever want to be on her bad side. Granny Jojo goes after Muriel, who apparently is someone Gumball found a picture of online who works at the ball, and eventually, they come clean to both of them before anyone gets hurt. Grandpa Louie explains he's just tired of Granny Jojo's hyper-jealousy of any other women around Louie, and wants to make just one friend, and was hoping that Muriel could be a real-life friend, more than just Elmore Plus. Granny Jojo decides Louie can have one friend, which turns out to be her. Good lord. In the episode The X, Gumball re-encounters Rob while on a date with Penny. Gumball seems super into the whole rivalry he had with him, but it turns out Rob has moved on and is now the nemesis of Banana Joe because he's easier to hate. Oh, poor Joe. I love that guy. To make things worse, Rob even returns his box of Gumball-obsessed stuff to him, and so Gumball decides to get him to hate him again. He accidentally sabotages Rob's plots to harm the banana, but even still, the experience just makes Rob more obsessed with getting Joe. Oh, it didn't do any Eventually, he just decides to try and be Rob's friend instead, though, so he sets off to find him. He reaches Rob, who's hiding in a bush, with a trap set for Joe. But just before he's smushed by a bunch of barrels, Gumball tries to get a photo, which stops Joe in his tracks. Rob's hatred for Gumball is reignited, and the two are mortal enemies again. Again, I have no idea why Gumball wants this. Season 5, Episode 31, The Best Not everyone can afford organic stores, Carmen. Maybe you should check your privilege! That's all I got for this one. Next. All right, in the last episode of season five, we've got a special one. It's not lore related, but it's pretty much entirely done by the team who made the internet series Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Give that a watch if you're in for some scary stuff. Anyways, the episode. Right. Gumball and Darwin are getting rid of their old toys and find some puppets, which Gumball makes Darwin promise to get rid of, but of course, he doesn't. Instead, he promises to never take them off his hands, and after a while, they start to get a mind of their own and take over Darwin's life, culminating when they cause him to attack Gumball. <laughs> When I said grow up, I didn't mean go straight to the part where you're in a retirement home screaming at chairs and biting the nurses. Gumball tosses the puppets, but they escape from the trash can by themselves and cause Darwin to break their game console, which replaced the puppets all those years ago. They knock Darwin out and make Gumball go after him by putting on the last puppet, who actually wants to help Gumball out. So he grabs his hand and gets teleported to a puppet world, walking through their imagination world. Shush. Can you hear that, Master Gumball? They overhear Darwin and the other puppets singing, and to say that the song is ominous is an understatement. I don't know what's going on! Oh, I'm not sure if this is the- Gumball bursts onto the scene to save Darwin, but it turns out the whole thing was a trap for the boys to become the puppets' playthings, with the seemingly nice puppet being evil all along. Darwin pulls their thread, and the two escape, blowing them up using their imagination. Because it's an imagination land. Duh. This episode is great as well. Really love the puppet world stuff. There's also a mini episode of just these puppets if you want to see more of that. But for us, we are moving on to the last season. In the first episode of season 6, we have another flashback episode. This time with the story of how Anais was born. 
and well, it goes pretty quick. As they go through a drive through for a hospital, Anais is delivered, but obviously kinda evil, and she immediately chucks Gumball and Darwin out of the car and onto cement. How does a baby have that much strength? Jeez. Anais keeps trying to hurt the two boys afterwards, too, putting them in a way of oncoming traffic, and even tricking the parents into thinking they hit her. I'm gonna go for a drive! Darwin, no! When things get worse with Anais's schemes, the boys decide to trap her, but the box gets taken to the dump. Luckily, she was never actually inside. No! You have to save her! The boys make sure the box isn't hurt, but when they finally reach safety, they find she isn't there. She almost shoves the boys into an incinerator, but they hug her first and she eventually drops her evil ways and even says her first words, Gumball did it, right to the parents. Okay, maybe she's slightly evil still. In the episode The Father, Frankie returns for a visit with the Watersons for a full family reunion to celebrate Vermin Man Day. The celebrations include bashing a pinata shaped like Frankie with a bunch of garbage inside rather than candy, and setting a model of him ablaze. Yeah, this holiday was made up by Granny Jojo out of spite, so Frankie takes the hint and walks away, to Richard's dismay. How about a joke? Knock knock. Dad? What? No. <laughs> with Richard comforting like a madman, the kids decide to try and make the connection between him and his father better. They go through a bunch of things that any old father and son would do, but Frankified. Tossing a football? How about a stolen one? Learning to drive a car? How about a getaway car? Fishing? How about for wallets on a freeway? Richard eventually breaks and says he just wanted to talk life, and gets Frankie to realize he can do better starting now, which is sweet. But what's sweeter is Richard did pick up a bit from their bonding time, as he even stole Frankie's wallet. Aw, that's really nice. Kinda. Maybe not. And don't worry, it's not mine anyway. Next up, we have The Transformation. In this one, Penny is gumball over to try and help resolve a family matter, that being their objection to Penny walking around without her shell all the time, going against generations of tradition. Also, Gumball lost his clothes on the way in. Patrick, Judith, good evening. Just in case you wondered why he's dressed like Santa. Mr. Fitzgerald tells Gumball the final decision on whether the family should use shells or not is up to him. And so Gumball deflates before stepping out to think. After getting threatened by everyone in the family to make the right decision, Gumball decides to try and make a story to explain his decision, but he keeps going in circles until the family interrupts him. Luckily, they figured out that they have to agree to disagree, and try to thank Gumball who booked it. They were literally threatening to murder him. I don't blame him. What? What happened? Oh, just a little accident in the kitchen. In the episode, The Drama, we finally get to see Darwin and Carrie on a date. They're hitting it off great, but when Masami and Leslie see their Elmore Plus post, they figure it's too good to be true, and go to Gumball to try and see if he knows any dirt on their relationship, which he doesn't. But geez, what jerks. However, the conversation alone gave Gumball some doubt, personified by this gray dude. See? I don't have- Are you sure? and he starts to snoop on Darwin and Carrie's dates, finding out that Carrie is 327 years old, and in that time, did have one boyfriend before Darwin, Azrael. Though, at first, it doesn't seem to bother either of them much. Later, though, Carrie bumps into Azrael and sets up a time for them to catch up. And even still, Darwin is unfazed. Gumball sure isn't, though. He reaches Darwin and decides he's gonna save their relationship, but catches up to Carrie and Azrael, who are, expectedly, just having a normal conversation. Gumball apologizes. Lucky didn't do that with you and Penny. You'd have gone completely loco. <laughs> yeah. And promptly kicks the doubt dude into Masami and Leslie. They definitely got what they deserved. Another lore-centered episode here with the future. Banana Joe's mom, Banana Barbara, the one who made all those future predicting paintings from a while back, goes missing, and we're left to presume that Rob has something to do with it. Gumball and Darwin decide to help Joe out and start by thinking like a banana. Well, maybe we need a different poster. This photo isn't even of her! Meanwhile, Rob is forcing Barbara to paint the future, but all that's showing up on canvas is static. The boys are still searching for her, and she's painting as fast as she can to show what's going on, and even altering her drawings to change reality, making a portal for the boys to go to her, which they fall right through, still using the mind of a banana. After a brief fight, Rob is painted out of existence. But again, the boys feel bad and ask Banana Barbara to paint him back for the future. Although after she does so, she oddly says, there is no future, and the screen cuts to static. Although we can slightly make out a figure in the reflection of the screen. Dang, things are getting crazy. Here it is, folks. 
the final episode, The Inquisition. Principal Brown is super stressed due to Superintendent Evil coming to inspect the school, and rightfully so, as he promptly takes over and vows to break the students due to their insanity and indecency. The superintendent is ruining the school and its students, trying to make them follow the rules of nature and be less cartoonish. It's just not professional for two members of staff to be in a relationship. Eventually, he starts having all students fixed, turning them into human versions of themselves. And even human, human versions of themselves. Dang. <laughs> Gumball and Darwin escape by embracing their cartoony nature, but then decide to head back to save everyone. They bring everyone back to their cartoony forms and stop Superintendent Evil, who turns out to be Rob. But he insists he's doing this all for a reason. That being, well, actually, we don't find out thanks to Tina. Later, though, Rob wakes up and reveals that because they didn't transform, they'll be sent to the other world, with the world cracking from beneath himself, sending him to yet another void. Yeah, a cliffhanger. Okay, so Gumball isn't quite over, and that last episode came out all the way back in 2019. Crazy, right? But after this long, long wait, we finally have confirmation from the series creators that a seventh season is coming. And you better believe we'll be here to cover it when it comes out. So make sure to stick around and subscribe for when that happens. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'm going to see you all in the next video.